upon life's pillows you are tempestos When you are discouraged thinking all is lost Count your many blessings, name them one by one And it will surprise you what the Lord has done Count your many blessings, name them one by one Good evening. Greetings to you all in the blessed name of our Savior Jesus Christ. What a joy it is to come back to study the word together as God's people. This evening we will be moving on from 13th verse of James 3 to 16th verse. There is a transition here happening in this particular chapter. But before we get into the transition, I would like to mention to all of us two things which is very, very crucial for us to know. And this, particularly this points came to me while I was on my devotion on the book of Job as well as on the book of Psalms. I would like to bring in two things this evening before we get into this passage of James just to help us see how the truth was even before the formation of Israel. Meaning, we all know that God instructed, God instructed Israelites to follow few commands. He told them to make a choice between the good and the evil, make a choice between the world and God. And this came into being when God formed Israel as a nation. He chose Moses to reveal his instructions and commands. And Moses did that as he guided people out of slavery. But there is an interesting fact here, which means that even before the formation of Israel, even before the non-Israelite literature, the truth of what God wanted was existing with the people whom he loved. Isn't it that very interesting to see that? The book of Job is actually a non-Israelite book. It dates back to the uh, patriarchal times and uh, it is actually a book written even before the formation of Israel as a nation. Even in that book, 
Job mentions about the tongue. Job mentions about his spiritual life. Job mentions something which is very crucial in the sight of God. How he formed his life as a follower of Yahweh. What God expected him to do and what he did is being revealed in this book. And before we dwell in that, we just look to the Lord in prayer, asking God to help us to move forward in the direction that he wants us to know this evening. Let us bow down our heads, look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, we adore you for this blessed evening that you have gifted to each one of us. Thanks for helping us to dwell on the letter of James in the times like these. Lord, it is helping us to know much more about our spiritual lives. It is helping us to know much more about our maturity. It is helping us to prepare ourselves to the destination that we, we are intended to reach. Loving Lord, this evening we surrender ourselves to the ministry of the Holy Spirit so that, Lord, we may hear what you want us to speak to. We commit ourselves and those of them who are participating in this Bible study online, wherever they are, bless them, Lord. Speak to them. Help them to open up their hearts and minds to sit before your throne of grace, to listen, to be taught, to be ministered by the Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. It's the book of Job which speaks about this. And as I was reading the book, I came across Job's life. Even in Job's life, he was following what we are studying this evening. The subject on the tongue. How it is connected to his heart, how it is connected to his mind. How the tongue is influential to the environment around it. All these things can be studied or all this can be known by reading the life of Job. I just want to bring to us two points this evening. One from the book of Job and the other one is from the book of Psalm. How it influenced even David. Okay, shall we turn our Bibles to Job chapter 31 verses from 29 to 30. Just two verses. We will see these two verses. He says in this 31st chapter, Job is actually uh, appealing before God. It's a final appeal before God and he wants to examine himself where he had gone wrong for the pain and suffering that he's going through. And as he speaks out, he speaks about the tongue also. And that is what is the point here in these two verses, 29 and 30. If I have rejoiced at the ruin of him who hated me or exulted when evil overtook him, I have not let my mouth sin by asking for his life with a curse. Job is actually speaking about his enemies here. He says that he has not rejoiced in the ruin of the enemies. He has not rejoiced in those people who hated him. He refers to the speech. He refers to the heart that he had. He refers to the thoughts that he had against the people who hated him or the people who were evil in his life. And in verse 30 he says, I have not let my mouth sin by asking for his life with a curse. Isn't it that important? The point that I would like to reveal to you from this book of Job is this, that even before the formation of the nation of Israel, God had his truth revealed to the people who followed him. As I said, the book of Job is not, not uh, an Israelite book, 
because of the genre that we see in the book. It is a book which, which is written even before the formation of Israel from the patriarchal times. And even in that book, the same truth what James is teaching here in the New Testament is almost the same. What James is telling us in chapter 3, the passage that we studied last week was that don't bring out blessing and cursing in the same mouth. Don't be a fork tongue people. Don't be people with both coming out, the salt and the sweet coming out from the same heart and mind and the tongue. Don't be that. I don't, I don't expect that in my followers. The same requirement was there even in the life of Job and Job was following that. That is what he reveals in 31st chapter, 29 and 30th verse. My dear people of God, the God whom we worship is a God who is the same yesterday, today and forever. He cannot change according to the times as we do. But he is a God who is the same. His truths doesn't change at all. Whether it is Job or whether it is us this evening. The requirement in our lives is the same. So my dear people of God, this evening we need to understand that what we are studying in the letter of James is the same requirement, is the same measure that he measured Job also for his spiritual life. Isn't it that interesting? Come back to the book of Psalm. It's very interesting that we need to go through this also because this also gives us a light to which we need to subscribe ourselves. Because when God speaks about the wickedness. He puts forth few characteristics. He mentions few things which are very, very crucial for us to know. And here this evening, we will dwell on this psalm. In the book of Psalm, chapter 50, verse 16 onwards, to verse 21, we see God giving the description of the wicked. Because in the book of Psalm, we see that there is a distinction even from the first chapter of Genesis, the distinction between the good and the wicked. Here in this particular Psalm, he gives the description and he speaks to the wicked. And in that particular passage we see the description mentioning about the lips, the mouth, the attitudes, the responses that the wicked have. And when you see this description, if you are able to find out those phrases, those words which is related to the subject that we are studying this evening will help you to understand what are those characteristics? How the wicked is described by God in the Bible? Shall we read? Shall we turn our Bibles to Psalm 50, verse 16? But to the wicked, God says, What right have you to recite my statutes, statutes or take my covenant on your lips? I just want you to know that how many times the lips or the mouth or something related to the tongue is mentioned in these few verses. But to the wicked God says, what right have you to recite my statutes or take my covenant on your lips? For you hate discipline and you cast my words behind you. If you see a thief, you are pleased with him and you keep company with 
adulterers. You give your mouth free rein for evil and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done and have been silent. You thought that I was one like yourself, but now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. Verse 22. Mark this then. You who forget God, lest I tear you apart and there be none to deliver. The one who offers thanksgiving as he sacrifices, as he sacrifice glorifies me to one who orders his way rightly. I will show the salvation of God. Very interesting psalm. I think you need to read the whole psalm because God speaks uh, even from the verse 1. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. The whole psalm is actually God speaking here. And as he comes to verse 16, he speaks particularly to the wicked people. And he describes how the wicked people are. And here in this particular passage we see that there are few words which is actually related to the subject that we are studying. The, the subject of tongue in our lives, in our spiritual life. He says in verse 16, see, what right have you to recite my statutes? Reciting comes out from the mouth and from the thoughts, okay? Or take my covenant on your lips. Israelites speak the covenant very often in their lives and they also instruct their children, they speak about the covenant, remember the covenant. They will be speaking that. And even in this third part of the verse, we see that they take, God is telling that they take his covenant on their lips. Come to verse 17. He says, for you hate discipline. How you hate discipline? You disobey what God has spoken. Either you disobey what God has spoken or you speak the evil against God. That is what is the description here in this passage. And we see this happening in every, almost every verse. See verse 17, you hate the discipline. Meaning whatever I give you, you hate it. You respond in a way that is not acceptable in my sight. And you cast my words behind you. Meaning, whatever I say, you don't give attention to it. Rather, you just keep that words behind you and move forward in your own ways. Come to verse 18. If you see a thief, you are pleased with him and you keep company with adulterers. adulterers. Meaning, if you see a thief means what is evil is very attractive, attractive to you. If you see thief, you are pleased with him. Meaning you compromise your life with him. Meaning you come with him by talking to him. By coming to an understanding with him. Telling him that you will compromise. You will be with him. Or you will be with whatever he does. Come to verse 19. You give your mouth free reign for evil. Meaning, see the description. Verse after verse. It is about the speech that we do. It is about the thoughts that come out from the heart and mind. It is the attitude that comes out. Even in verse 8, he says, You give your mouth free reign for evil and your tongue frame deceit. Isn't it this psalm giving us something more deeper to what we are studying in the letter of James. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander. Speaking. Slander. You slander your own mother's son. Meaning you have a fight with your brother or sister in your own family. How do you do that? You use the tongue. You use the deceptive heart. You use the deceptive mind. These things you have done and have been silent. Meaning God has given us the grace till now. And he is silent, giving us a grace so that we, we will understand someday. You thought that I was like you. I was like yourself. One among you. You thought that God you worship is one among you. You thought that God is okay with what I am doing. But now, I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. My dear people of God, the tongue is very crucial. That's what the point in the letter of James 
and and the tongue is in the middle like a hub in the wheel it influences all the other parts all the other relationships all the other uh, dynamics in our life and that is what is the description of the wicked here in this in this particular passage but god says finally in verse 21 that he has taken account all of those that we have done he says that you recite my status uh, statutes but you are not obeying that you bring on the covenant on your lips but you don't mean what you do that when you do that you hate discipline when i speak you 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 oppose that you neglect that you put it, put my words behind you meaning you don't care about what i speak if you see the evil you compromise with them how by speaking to them by giving your life by surrendering your pleasures to them and become adulterous with them and you give your mouth free reign over evil and your tongue frames deceit see all these things are very crucial to know and here in this particular passage finally he says in verse 21 see i have taken all this into account but now i am silent maybe i am giving you the grace to understand but now i rebuke you and lay the charge before you my dear people of god see the conclusion even in verse 22 and verse 23 mark this then you who forget god lest i tear you apart and there be none to deliver my dear people of god there is consequences for all that we speak for all the thoughts that come in our heart for all the thoughts that come into our mind for all the plans that go behind hidden in our lives my dear people of god nothing can be hidden from the eyes of god whether it is the life of job or whether it is in the psalm we see that god has given importance to the tongue and with this in background we will move on to verse 13 of james it's very interesting isn't it because we need to see whether this teaching that we are doing is just to the book of job or is it in the story line of the bible we see this happening we see this happening all through the bible even before the formation of israel as a nation the god who was a creator in the book of genesis already had framed all that he wanted from his disciples all that he wanted from the people who loved him even before the formation of the universe even before the creation of the universe my dear people of god god had the truth in place the truth was already set it was the truth which governed the heavens which was with god and his angel armies the truth the word of god was there in heaven and after the creation of the world the same truth came down to the people who loved god my dear people of god that is the story line here in the book of job this evening we are studying on this particular passage very interesting very crucial for our spiritual lives we speak we use we think we respond thinking that nobody can see i am the brilliant man in the whole of the universe nobody can overpower me but my dear people of god the silence of god is actually called as grace in the new testament he is silent because one day or the other we will think about this and come in terms with the requirements that god wants us to know turn your bibles to james chapter 3 verse 13 who is wise and understanding among you but his good conduct let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom but you if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts do not boast and be false to the truth this is not the wisdom that comes down from above but is earthly unspiritual and demonic 
My dear people of God, there is this transition between the two subjects here. He's transiting to a different subject, revealing that who is wise and understanding among you. The requirement for the disciple of Christ is that he needs to be a man filled with wisdom. He needs to be a man who understands the things of God, the requirements of God. And he should be a man with the correct information about the God he worships. So the question here in verse 13 is, Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct. My dear people of God, this is very crucial. Our responses, our reactions, our our conduct is very, very crucial for God to use us as his witness. That is what is the point here. Who is wise and understanding? If you are wise and understanding as the follower of Jesus Christ, the one sign that you can see, which I can see, is the good conduct in our lives. Whether it is a time of pain or whether it is time of joy. How is our conduct? That is what is the answer that comes out in this particular verse. By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness, humility of wisdom. My dear people of God, the conduct is not just a casual response to what is going around us. What Christ wants us to know is this, that, the understanding, the, the understanding that comes into our life for what we have as information about God. When we digest this information, the understanding comes. And when the understanding is complete in itself, we will be seen as the people filled with wisdom. See the point here. By your good conduct... Meaning, there is one side, your conduct, and on the other side, you need to have that humility. The word here in ESV is the meekness of wisdom. My dear people of God, many people in the world actually become proud when they're filled with the understanding and the wisdom. But in the realm of God, in what God expects from our life as the disciples of Jesus Christ. The one character that we need to demonstrate is the character of humility. Philippians, the letter to Philippians, Paul describes that the humility of Christ should be in our life. And the same word is used by James. See, it's not enough that you you demonstrate the good conduct. It has to be demonstrated in the character of humility. That is very crucial for us to know. Many of us do good things. We are called good people by the people who are watching us. But there, is, there should be an inner quality called the humility. It is not pride. It is not boastfulness. It is the humility, the meekness. My dear people of God, the good conduct has to be consumed by humility. We shall move on from verse 13. Before we dwell on verse 14, I would like to bring in two passages again from the Old Testament. Why? Why this is very crucial for us to understand? Because these two passages in the Old Testament describes Satan as he is. Who was Satan and what he became? Because he was an angel, chief angel. He was filled with understanding. He was an angel of wisdom. But gradually, 
there is a change in his life there is a change in his behavior in isaiah chapter 14 we see the description about satan and his characteristics also is mentioned in this particular chapter isaiah 14 verse 12 he says how you are fallen from heaven god is speaking to satan here and he says how you have fallen from heaven o day star son of dawn how you are cut down to the ground you who laid the nations low you you said in your heart i will ascend to heaven above the stars of god i will set my throne on high i will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north come back to ezekiel chapter 23 28 sorry 28 14 to 18 four verses again it is the description of satan here you were an anointed guardian cherub i placed you you were on the holy mountain of god in the midst of the sun stones of fire you walked you were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till unrighteousness was found in you verse 16 says in the abundance of your trade you were filled with violence in your midst and you sinned so i cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of god and i destroyed you o guardian cherub from the midst of the stones of fire your heart was proud because of your beauty you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor i cast you to the ground i exposed you before kings to feast their eyes on you but the multitude of your iniquities in the unrighteousness of your trade you profaned your sanctuaries so i brought fire out from your midst it consumed you and i turned you to ashes on the earth in the sight of all who saw you my dear people of god this evening we need to know what deceived satan to become who he is today both the passages in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28 both describes the fall of Satan from heaven. Please read these passages. Go back and meditate upon this. What were those characteristics which influenced Satan to become who he is today? Satan's selfish ambition and jealousy led him to be cast out of heaven. And that is what is mentioned in verse 14, James 3. 14 it says but if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart do not boast and be false to the truth there was no humility whatsoever required in satan to demonstrate that good conduct yes he was filled with wisdom he had understanding he had all information about god he was one of the main cherubs that's what the word says meaning is he was one of the chief angels in heaven but that was compromised he compromised those characteristics for selfish ambition he wanted to go above god so the pride which came out of the wisdom that he had led him to become satan and who he was two things that emerge out of this passage are jealousy and selfish ambition which made god to cast satan out of his position in heaven my dear people of god very crucial for us to understand what i would like to inform you in summary of all that we are doing this evening is this that the god who was before the universe is the same god that we are dealing with 
today the expectation of god with the angels were the same because he is speaking about the truth and the, the and the sin is bringing in the false the expectation in from the life of abraham that was in the patriarchal times was the same and when it moved on to job it was the same when it moved on to psalm it was the same when it came into the new testament the requirement is the same the teaching is the same he is speaking about the bitterness and jealousy in the life of satan now james is speaking the same terms bitterness jealousy and selfish ambition my dear people of god jealousy selfish ambition is some of the common characteristic that we in our lives for us to sustain we will put down others around us and we move forward by doing that see how we resemble the characteristics of satan in our own lives maybe nobody will notice in our life maybe the church may not recognize maybe the uh, fellow pastors may not recognize but god is very particular when he tells something and he told about the wickedness of people in psalm 50 verse from 16 onwards and we see the description how he says you might think that i am one of you but don't misunderstand me i am not like you i might have been silent i might have given time for you to revive yourself but it is not that i am compromised the truth for me is the same yesterday today and forever and for eternity come back to the letter of james wisdom according to james is not the re- acquired information we have lot of information about spiritual lives and the social media is flooded with the information everywhere there is online church the ministries that were being done in the field have crept into the online media today it has giving it has been giving information after information there is no scarcity of the word james is speaking about wisdom wisdom according to james is not the acquired information but practical insight with spiritual implications that is what is required of us practical insights with spiritual implications satan had access to the wisdom of god but his choice made him wicked my dear people of god that is what is open to all of us this in these times that we are living when we were children there were no much of god servants around us there were one or two it, it was just few of them we used to run we used to go behind them we used to go and listen to them we used to get the teachings from them and we used to grow spiritually there were no much evangelists there were no much missions happening in the past but now we have lot of information about spiritual life we have lot of influences upon our lives but we are not yielding the fruits that we need to yield because of our choices that was the problem with satan satan had the access to the wisdom of god but his choices made him wicked this evening the question is what are your choices how are they been opted in your life on what basis do you make decisions in your life one that comes out in verse 13 is that let your conduct let your conduct be of humility meaning you are a person who need to wash the fellow brother or sister's feet the humility is what jesus looks in our life not the pride not the proud attitude not the domination that james spoke in the earlier chapters of his letter satan wanted to dominate over god he was cast out 
my dear people of god dominance is one of those characters that we see in the churches today dominating the whole whole play or whole scene or whole group of people the community for itself that is happening in nations also today the combinations that come out of those things is only the destruction my dear people of god please go back and read about satan and his characteristics and what caused him to be cast out of heaven the same thing james uses here the question is what are your choices how are they been opted in your life and mine how is it been taught to our children how is it been monitored in our youngsters in the churches that we belong to how is it how is that taught to the young adults in our churches because many of the marriages are breaking in the churches my dear people of the the one thing that comes out of a broken marriage is the ego there is no humility there the one thing that comes out of any broken family is the pride can we afford to have pride and be spiritual can we have that pride and be a disciple and be a servant in the church isn't it that pride is the cause for our dominance my dear people of god stick to this passage and see by his good conduct let him show his works in meekness let him show his good conduct in humility of wisdom wisdom and humility are two sides of the same coin pride and wisdom was a combination that satan had james is suggesting humility and wisdom my dear people of god what is in your life and mine what are our choices how are they be opted out in our lives on what basis do we make decisions in your life as i mentioned about philippians letter let us turn philippians chapter 2 verse 3 to 11 it is the example of christ in humility see the description compare that description of satan as he is and compare that with who christ is paul describes it wonderfully in this particular passage in philippians chapter 2 verse 3 to 11 he says do nothing from rivalry or conceit but in humility count others more significant than yourselves this is actually a verse which can relate to the verse that we read in james because every human being has the image of god we cannot afford to curse anyone around us and even here in verse 3 it says do nothing from rivalry or conceit but in humility count others more significant more significant than yourself let each of you look not only in his own interests but also to the interests of others have this my have this mind among yourselves which is yours in Christ Jesus who though he was in the form of god did not count equality with god a thing to be grasped but made himself nothing taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on the cross therefore god has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name so that at the name of jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father my dear people of god you were speaking about humility jesus was the meekest among all the men in the human history my dear people of god this is what is the life the way of life the lifestyle of jesus which led the whole world to salvation what is your options this evening 
Is it the option of pride and boastfulness and dominance? Is your wisdom filled with pride and proud and you say that you are the powerful man? My dear people of God, I would provoke you to think through this passage in James and apply that what is happening around the world now. Apply those things to the current affairs of our nation. Humility, wisdom can bring in the salvation. Pride and wisdom will lead you to destruction. Earthly wisdom leads us to the influence of demons upon our lives. That is what is mentioned in 3.15. Earthly wisdoms, earthly wisdom leads us to influence, to the influence of demons upon our lives. How do we understand this? Wisdom from below, which James calls demonic, is driven by demons. Demons take pride in the combination of pride and wisdom. My dear people of God, it is we cannot afford to lead our spiritual lives with the wisdom of God plus pride. We can only be humble. We can only be meek. That is why he says, by, his, by your good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. Wisdom from below, which James speaks, is demonic. It is driven by demons. That means you need to understand the demons ride on the top of us using human approach, the earthly wisdom to problem solving. My dear people of God, do not take the suggestions of demons upon your life. You are taking the suggestions of demons or the satanic angels in your life. It means that the combination of your spiritual life is pride and the wisdom. Yes, you have the knowledge about the Bible. You have the knowledge about the God whom you serve. But you, ha you have a different combination which is contrasting in the eyesight of God. And that is the pride and the wisdom of God. My dear people of God, see to it that Satan will not deceive you. Satan will not take you for a ride here through this. When you disregard God's approach to your problem, when you disregard God's way to your problem and suffering and lean towards the human wisdom, lean towards what the world offers to you as the solution or the man's approach to solve your problems, it's not just man's approach but you have just invited a demon to work on your problem. One of Satan's emissary to help you with a solution for your problem, with an answer. It's not just the people's problem. Now it has become Satan's problem, my dear people of God. And the final outcome of pride and wisdom is the destruction of your own self as well as the problem that you're facing. My dear people of God, the God we, whom we worship is a God all powerful. He knows everything. The point that James brings out here is never in your life opt for something from demon. Never opt something from the world. I am able, I am able to rescue you. I am the one who can take you out of the situation. I am the one who can solve your problem. Don't ever deceive yourself in opting what the world offers you. My dear people of God, many people in the, even in the Bible have opted for a solution. They are not the Gentiles or they are not the non-believers. They were the believers who followed Yahweh. And one example in the Old Testament is the nation of Israel itself. They knew the presence of God. They have seen it without, with their eyes. They have experienced with, their, with the presence of God amongst their midst. Yet, they opted 
something from the world it was very pleasurable in the beginning they were counted one among many in the world the other nations around them came to help them the other nation offered their chariots and the horses as strength and support to them finally there was an exile in their lives my dear people of god that should not happen in my life nor yours the point that james brings out in verse 15 is that this is not the wisdom that comes down from above but it is earthly and spiritual and demonic for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist there will be disorder and every vile practice my dear people of god see the combination here he comes to his church blunt with the truth he is coming out to the people who worship who is who are following jesus christ with the with the truth that will hurt them but that is what needs to be told that's why eating fruit in the garden wasn't just a fruit problem but it was going to affect all the humanity for all generations one mistake one misunderstanding one ambition to know the good and the evil one deceptive sentence from satan led the humanity into sin for eternity my dear people of god that's why eating fruit in the garden was not the fruit problem but it was going to affect all human humanity for all generations my dear people of god the truths that is been revealed in the bible actually are those truths which can which can sustain you for eternity on the other side the same truth if it is neglected if you put those words behind you and walk according to the world there is eternal consequences even for that for all times for all times we need to understand the story of adam and eve in the garden for all times it is worth listening and understanding they listened and used their own human logic here it looked very good the apple tasted very good it was pleasant in the eyes of all of that there would be spiritual repercussions for what looked like human choices there were consequences of all that my dear people of god we need to see what god sees we need to come back to the word with every situation which is around us the call for pastors to lead the churches is this that we lead you into the word you need to see everything in the light of the word in the light of eternal truth that is been revealed in the word that was the point here james is mentioning who is wise and understanding among you are you wise and understanding this evening my dear people of god here the key when you make human decisions that regards heaven's perspective you have just invited the devil to take control of your situation to bring you the consequences of that choice my dear people of god be careful in everything that you do look into every aspect yes something comes in our lives when 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 these words like love your enemies comes we will we will never do that you know why because it is very hard to become humble before the people it is very hard to follow these instructions we think that being arrogant being people with with the solution from the world can overpower anything no my dear people of god when you are in the realm of god see to it that you follow the instructions of god himself the problem with satan in isaiah 14 and ezekiel 28 was this 
that he wanted to overpower, overtake the instructions of Jesus. He wanted to put behind the words of God himself. He wanted to go and sit on the throne of God himself. My dear people of God, in one way or the other, we stand against God himself if we look into these things in our own human wisdom and in our own earthly wisdom. And James rightly says that it is unspiritual and demonic. James distinguishes God, God's and earthly wisdom and its consequences in these three, four verses. James's point in the text was that we inherited sinful characteristics when we were born into this world. That sinful nature is directly connected to hell. We need to be aware of that. The sinfulness that we have brought through our lives into this world is connected already by the birth to hell itself. There is a time in our lives where we need to make choice whether we will move on with that sinful nature in us or we will choose to let go and opt for godly wisdom to set things right in our lives. This is very crucial for us to understand. My dear people of God, as pastor, James wanted his congregation to make their choices in the light of God's word. What is your choice today? Are you able to understand what James is speaking here in this particular passage? We had the comparison of Job's life and the book of Psalm. And we had studied about the characteristics of Satan. And we have studied those characteristics in the light of what is revealed in James chapter 3, verse 13 to 16. My dear people of God, let us continue to meditate upon these verses. Come back to the fellowship with all that you know, all that you have to share. You're welcome. Call me anytime, and we will move forward learning together. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, this evening we commit ourselves into thy hands. Thanks for the light you shed on through your word upon our lives this evening. Yes, Lord, in the life of Job, the measure was the same. Job reveals that he had not used his tongue, his heart, his mind to, to ruin his enemy, nor he uttered a curse from his lips. And Lord, even as you described the wicked in chapter 50 of Psalm, you said those characteristics, you revealed those characteristics of the wicked person. Yes, Lord, most of that characteristics is related to our heart, mind and the tongue. Fourteen times in that particular passage we see the reference to the subject that we are studying. Either we speak, either we think. Lord, in every step of our spiritual life, the tongue is the key organ that we use. Yes, Lord, it is influenced by the heart and mind. My Lord, this evening, help us to see the tongue in a wheel as a hub connected to every aspect of our lives. Loving Father, thank you for your revelations. Continue to minister to us even as we meditate upon this. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.